Hello! Today I'm going to be doing a review of the uh, cheapest mini mill that is available almost anywhere on the internet that I've seen, at least in the United States. Now, um, before we go into this review, I'd like to do a, or clarify a few things. First of all, I am not a machinist. <laughs> this is my first uh, venture into machining of almost any variety. And um, that's actually the reason I bought this. So the next cheapest mill that's available, uh, and by mill, I may be using the wrong terminology, is that it has this ability to move the plate along with a moving up and down sort of drill press uh, design. So the next cheapest mill, or mini mill, what you should call it, is $450. So this is quite literally half the price of the next most, or the next cheapest option. Now, I'm sure the next most cheapest option is from, it's actually branded, this is unbranded. It will, um, I'm sure, come with a lot better warranty um, than this uh, manufacturer warranty, which hopefully you're able to use Mandarin to submit it. Then, so, who I'd recommend this for, or who the intended audience this is, I believe, is someone who's just simply not going to spend more than two hundred dollars on a essentially toy for their equip for their hobby. Now, keeping that in mind, let's go into the specs. Now, the reported specs by the company, which um, yeah, I'll just read them off for you. I'm sure. I would take with a grain of salt is the motor speed is 2,000 or whoops 20,000 rpm per minute um, but the spindle speed itself is 3,000 uh, rotations per minute plus or minus 15 percent and it only has an on or an off setting uh, it plugs into a power brick from this barrel plug uh, the power supply is included uh, along with the switch and it has um, I don't know if this means something to you a large slider stroke of 45 millimeters, a small slider stroke of 35 millimeters, and the chucks, which are these, come in a 1, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 5, and 6 sizes. Um, I have one of them installed right now, but essentially from... Uh, let's see if I can get this focused. Here. This size to roughly this size. And, um, so with those, oh, and the clamp, the vice clamp that's on here can do 50 by 60 millimeters, and this is a miniature machine. There's not many reviews on this. I got it on, uh, Walmart, although it's not the only supplier, but in the U.S. the best supply is Walmart, which right now it's only $150, or $180. It says it's discounted, but that's the only price I've seen it at. It is miniature. We are talking, this is my hand, and, yep, this is my hand. It is absolutely tiny. Now you may be wondering what in the world are you going to use this for, and I believe many of the people watching this are probably going to be looking at it for lock sport and challenge lock design, And but I'll get into that later. Let's, let's go back to the construction. So it is an extruded, I believe, aluminum construction, all these pieces that are held together by these crushing bolts that essentially consist of a line of slightly angled um, parallel pieces of metal and when you screw them tight it crushes the two pieces of extruded aluminum together. It works. Um, it does have a little bit of slop in it when you start adding about three chains of those combined extruded aluminum pieces together but honestly very little for what a surprisingly okay tolerance is for how little it costs. Now, um, let me just demonstrate that flex for you. So I can set this up here, and then if I can focus it. So at most, you could be getting, it's not demonstrated very well on video, but we're not going to be, 
you're not going to be getting the most precise of um, not going to be getting the most precise of tolerances. But honestly, I've used it in small applications, which I'll talk about later, and had pretty good results. Next, um, it does not include a great weight amount. It is not flat on the base, and the side has nothing with it. Now, you may be able to mount it with whatever these are. I haven't quite figured out what these two screws and two plates are for, but um, let me know in the comment section if you know. But what I actually did is I placed it with a vise and put the vise at 90 degrees. So while it's been clamping here, I turned it this way, well, this way more accurately, and clamped onto the sides of it. And that actually worked great for my application. And so that's what I'd recommend unless you have a better idea. It's also great because it's only temporary. Because um, realistically, if you're going to get heavier into machining, I would recommend upgrading at some point. This is more of just a test machine. And finally, on the included bits, you actually get, well, I mean, of course, I'm not a machinist, I don't know, a decent selection. So you have, again, what I talked about, these eight collets, which one of them is included, or one of them I have put on right now, and you have four bits. Now, the one you saw earlier is not included. I purchased the, that myself. This is the smallest bit it comes with. Oops. Let me refocus. And that's a pretty nice small bit. Then it comes with these three others, which are all mounted, or all put in a box. We have this. Um, I should specify that, at least to my knowledge, all of these are end mill bits. And here, this is about the largest. And... I haven't even opened this one yet. Yeah. Now, I don't know what these uh, mean, but I will focus on the labels of these so you can see them. Actually, the one that came pre-installed on it was didn't come with a box. And if you can't read that, they all say uh, 4 by 6 by 11 by 55, or sorry, top one is 4 by 6 by 11 by 55, then 6 by 6 by 13 by 57, 5 by 6 by 13 by 57, and are all prefixed with a 4 with whatever, I'm not sure what that means specifically. And this is kind of strange, I just noticed that they all have a hole in the back. I don't know if that means anything to you guys, but it has that. All right. Now that I've gone through the construction and what's included, uh, let's talk about the adjustment points. So you can't do a whole lot of adjustment with the up-down on here. As you can see, it can only move along this rail. And there's no protection at the bottom. I was actually milling something and was trying to go down. And I didn't realize I went too far. And the whole thing just ended up dropping down. And I had to shut it off really quick. Um, so you have to do, you do have to keep that in mind, you have to set it up for the height that you want to move within. And then one problem I had was that these pieces here would come loose from the bolt they're attached to. So I had to take the included Allen wrench and go into the side piece here and tighten them back down. Um, again, that's not really a major problem, just something you might encounter. And next, let's go into the capabilities of this. Now, I've only used it with a few things. Um, on the reviews of it, someone said they were able to mill mild steel. But uh, th with my experience, I've milled this lock body. And it's American 1100. I don't actually know what it's made of. Uh, I could be I'm completely making it up, but roughly, I think, aluminum or something and I was able to mill brass. Now, the brass, all of them, I went pretty slow with it. I wasn't just like tearing through it as fast as I could, but I'm pretty happy with the results, honestly, because this is advertised just for woodwork, so I was happy I was able to do that. And capabilities-wise, it worked great as a press. Um, I had a 
concave body with let me disassemble this and show you guys um i had the outside of this lock or this lock bible that i wanted to mill into and to do that i used the um well, i don't have a screwdriver with me oh yes i actually do Now, as I was saying, I just clamped that piece into here and just went down with it and it used a normal drill bit I had. Worked perfectly fine. Now let me show you the result of that. Now I did plug it back up with a screw that I then cut off, but you can kind of see what I did. I made a hole just like that into the side and then it didn't slip off any of the directions, just went straight through. So passes that test in my book. Then next, um, grab some of these pieces that fell. I went and used this end mill bit, actually not this one specifically, but I used an end mill bit to go and route through this 1100 body. And it turned out pretty well. I didn't take a lot off, so I don't know how far down you could go, but it's certainly enough to cut through it. Then, I guess with all of that out of the way, I'd like to just talk about my general conclusions about this. So, the obvious thing first, this isn't going to perform like a $500 or a $1,000 plus mini mill, or any mill for that matter. So if that's what you're expecting, you're going to be disappointed. But I bought this just with the knowledge I could return it, and with the mindset that I'm not going to pay more than $200 for making challenge locks. And because of that, I'm actually quite happy with this. It is amazing for the price. Um, I'm sure that if you went up to the $450, it would probably be twice as good or even more as good. But it honestly does what I wanted. Um, I would, I haven't tried it with wood, but I'm sure it could easily do wood and soft metal when doing shallow passes, or at least that's what I've done with it. And again, with my conclusions, um, I think this is a great piece to work on challenge locks with and to work on small machining that you have to do and just kind of enjoy the process. So, I actually made, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this very well without fully disassembling it, but I made this challenge lock, and actually I will if I can get my follower here. I made a little route in the side of the plug that will allow me to, let's see, I think this is the bit allows me to create a sort of maze. See that route? That's what I made. And I'll put this back together. And So then I put this pin in the side that interacts with that route, and you can try to turn it right. Oops, let me put it. You can try to turn it right, but it'll get blocked because I didn't continue that path. But what you have to do is you have to push down, and then you can turn it right to unlock it, or you can turn it left and then go through the route out. Now, it can't move anywhere but the specified directions I did. And all of this is done that with that end mill. Tolerances aren't great. We're talking about really small little details, but honestly, pretty good. I'm impressed with the overall capabilities for the price. And with that, um, thank you for watching my video and have a great day.